Well, it has nearly been five years since I last uploaded a Python project on this channel, but I'm very glad to be back speaking with you all once again, making another Python project with you guys. Now today, we're going to be building a slots machine. Now if you don't know, the slots machine is a very simple gambling game where you, in the real game you spin a wheel and you see what icons or symbols you get, and the idea is that if they all line up in a certain configuration, you get uh, some money. Some money you bet, you get a certain multiplier times that back. In this case, in our game, we're just going to use double. So, it should look a little bit like this. We're going to set up something like this that will be outputted. Now, um, the middle row is what we're actually playing with. The top two, the top row and the bottom row, sorry, are just there simply for the sake of decoration, because in the real game, you can sort of see what was an above and what was above and below what you actually got. But for us, we're just going to be focusing on the middle row, the middle row of the row they're actually playing on. And as you can see, they did not get all the same symbol. So in this case, they would have lost. So to code this, it would make sense that we're going to need Python to be able to use randomness because we want the sort of grid here and the middle row especially to be randomly generated. So to do that, what we're going to have to be doing is using Python's inbuilt random module. And to do that, all we're going to do is import random. Now, import random will allow us to use all the functions within the random module, and the random module allows us to use randomness. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to set a range of symbols, or a list of symbols, that the computer will generate from. So we're going to say that, in this case, you see how we've got three different symbols here. I'm going to be using three symbols. You can use as many as you want, but just be warned that as the amount of symbols the computer will randomly choose from goes up, the chance of the player playing the game winning goes down. But you can make it as many as you want. I'm just going to use three. And how you're going to do that here is you're going to set them up in a list by saying the list is just symbols equals, and then as you can see, the syntax of just creating a list. Now, Following this, we want the game to continue running until the player runs out of money. Now, I'm saying they start with 100 tokens, but you can set it to anything. However, what we are going to do is that when the player gets to zero tokens, we're going to restart and let the, the whole program run again. So to get something that continuously runs, we want us to have an infinite while loop. So while true is the way we do this, because anything that is now in here after the while true loop will loop and continue indefinitely. Next, we want to define a variable for how many tokens the player actually has. And how we do that is simply setting it equal to a number. I'm going to use the name tokens and set it equal to 100. Now, you might just want to introduce them to the game saying, welcome to slots game. Now, we want a secondary loop inside the infinitely looping loop, which continues running while the tokens are greater than zero. So this is the current game. What will be played in here is the current game. And once you exit that loop, you've started a new game. So while tokens is greater than zero, what we want to do is we want to tell the user how many tokens they have, which is, which is here. As you can see, that's what that line corresponds to here. Now, following that, what we want to do is we want to give the user a chance to say how many tokens they'd like to bet on their next run. Now, what we want to do is because if we give them 100 tokens, the user could, let's say, bet 50, and if they lose, they only have 50 left. But what we want to do is we want to restrict the way they bet to solely use integer values of tokens rather than decimal values. Because if you, if you allow the user to use decimal values, then they could infinitely continue betting smaller and smaller and smaller and never actually lose the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a try block here. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we want the user to put an integer value in. So when we ask them for their bet, we're going to put in a try block here and then say bet is an integer, it's an input, and we want to ask them their bet amount. And then we're going to put an accept block in. Now, I'll explain this. A try accept here, what it does is it attempts for this to happen. And if it does not work, it wants this to happen. So in Python, the com uh, Python can throw errors, meaning that if they input something here that's not an integer as we ask for it to be, the accept block will run, and it will tell them to enter a whole number of tokens. The reason we do this is not only because it stops them from entering decimals, which are floats in Python, we also do this because if they slip on the keyboard and write 32w, for instance, and accidentally put in something that's not a number, the accept, what's in the accept will run, and that'll 
stop the error and stop the program from crashing and let them try again. So that's why we have the try accept here. It's not actually necessary for the whole program to run, but I'd think it's good because the person playing the game might not always put in what you want them to put in. Following that, what we're going to do is we're going to say that if they try and put a bet in that's more than the amount of tokens they have, that's impossible, so we're going to let them know. Sorry. We're going to let them know by putting in if bet is greater than tokens. Do that. Now, here I actually put in a continue statement. Now, this continue statement just before the if statement will make this jump back to the start of the loop to test this condition again. Now it's quite hard to explain sort of why that's in there now until we get to the end of the code, but I will explain it at the end and I'll show you why we did it. But for now, just put the continue in just before the if statement here. Now onto the if statement. If the bet is greater than the amount of tokens, you want to print not enough tokens and we will not run the game for them. However, if that's not true, we want to run the game. Now this is where our main coding will take place, inside this else statement. Because if the bet's greater than the tokens, we can't do it. But if it's not, hence else, then we'll run the, the rest of the program. So, everything's gone smooth. They've put in an integer value, and it's smaller than the amount of tokens they have, or equal to the amount of tokens they have. So what we're going to do is we're going to start running the program tokens minus equals bet. So what we're doing is we're taking the bet away from the amount of tokens they have. So if they have 100 tokens, they bet 30, they now only have 70. Next, what we want to do is we want to learn to set up this here, this grid here. Now, the grid is a little bit difficult to set up to make it look nice like this, but I'm going to go through it slowly. The first thing we want to do is create a variable called square one. Square one will correspond to this we are going to be naming three variables, square one, square two, and square three, for the middle row here. We don't worry about this, and we don't worry about that, because that's not actually being checked, that's just randomly generated. I'll explain that later, but for now, we're going to define the square one as this, square two as that, and square three as that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the random module to randomly choose what symbol it actually is. So for square one, we're going to set it equal to random dot choice brackets, symbols. Now what random.choice does is it randomly selects from a list and the name of the list is symbols because we define the symbols list up here. So if we've done that for square one, it would make sense to do it for square two and square three. So we're going to do the exact same there. Square two, random.choice, square three, random.choice. Now, following this, we actually want to set up this to make it look nice like it does there. And I will just put it in here and I'll explain it line by line. It's going to look a bit messy for you, but it should make sense. So, what we're going to do when we actually print this is print. Print a blank line. Then, we're going to print the top line. And how we do that is we're going to print this character, followed by a space because we have comma, and then a random choice from the symbols here, another one of those here, and then another random choice from the symbols, which corresponds to there. So as you can see, in the middle line, we've actually used square one, square two, and square three. But in the top line here, what we've actually done is put a random choice of a symbol, a random choice of a symbol, and a random choice of a symbol. That's because we're not actually going to be testing whether these random symbols matter, because we're only testing for the middle line. So therefore, we don't actually need to name them or define them as anything. So what we're going to do is do that for the top line, print a line there just to make it look nice, which is that line there. Then we're going to print the middle line, which is the line we're checking, then another nice line there, and the bottom line is the exact duplicate of the top line. Now, we've done all that, so it actually will look nice there, and we've built the grid, but now what we want to do is we want to find a way to test. What are we testing for? Well, we're going to be testing whether all these three symbols are the same, and if they are the same, we're going to give them double their money, and if they're not the same, we're going to just do nothing because we've already taken their money in the first line. So, if square one is the same as square two, and square two is the same as square three, then square one is the same as square three. Okay, so what this line here does is it checks if all the th three squares are equivalent, and then we're going to set a variable called amount one. The amount one is simply double the bet. So amount one is bet times two, and then we're going to tell them how much they won. You won the amount one tokens. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the amount that was 1 to the value of tokens, which is their running total. Then, if they didn't win, we'll use an else statement to do that. We're going to print you lost this time. And that's all we need to do in this else statement. And the reason that is, is because we already took their money. We don't actually need to get rid of the money now, again, because we've already taken it. Now, that's all done. All we need to do now is actually, for just user friendliness, tell them that once they exit this loop, what they're gonna, what's going to happen to them is they're going to be out of tokens. We're no longer in this loop here, the main game loop, because while tokens is greater than zero, once this is no longer true, the code will stop looping around here and jump all the way to here, this line here. You're out of tokens. Thank you for playing. And then it's just going to print a blank line here. And then what's going to happen is, well, we're out of this loop here. We're continuing on this loop. And it's going to jump all the way back to the start. And it's going to go to while true. It's going to test while true. Well, that's always true. It's going to start the game again. So let's actually give that a go when we give it a run. And let's see what happens. Run, run module. Here we go. All right, welcome to slots game. You have 100 tokens. How many of you guys want to bet? I'm going to say 30. We've lost this time, and we lost because these are not the same. Okay, let's try bet 15. We keep losing. I'm going to try a smaller bet just because I don't want to lose too much money in case we just keep losing. Keep losing. Oh, we can't win, apparently. Wow, the bad luck's bad. Let's get on to one token bets now. Yeah, there you go. We finally won. As you can see here, we finally won because this line was all the same. And... There you go. In all the other ones where we lost, it told us that we lost and we, we dropped one token. But in this case, we put $1 in when we had seven and we won. And therefore, we won two tokens and we now have eight. So we're still pretty poor, but at least we won a game. Now, I want to show you why we actually did some of the things we did in here to make sure it works. I want to actually show you what the try accept block here does. Now, the bet amount, let's say we put in 0.2. 0 0.2, which is not an integer, hit enter, please enter a whole number of tokens. How good is that? That is what the try accept does here. It stops an error and it allows us to start the game again, in the sense it allows them to ask a bet again. This will also work if you type in, for instance, a letter, a, a string, so A, enter a whole number of tokens. Now, what I want to do is actually show you guys what happens if we don't have this continue block. Now, uh, not block, statement, sorry. So continue does, what it does is that a continue will actually, in any loop that it continues in, it'll jump back to the start of the loop and check that co the condition is still true. So if we put continue in here, it'll jump back to here and test, is the token still greater than zero? And then it'll continue the loop. The reason we have that in there is because if we run this program again, Sorry, if I get rid of continue and run this program again, and let's just say we put in five tokens, if we now put in a bet amount that doesn't work, for instance, A, it will continue the game. It'll tell us, enter a whole number of tokens. The accept will still work, but because we don't have continue, the rest of the program will run, and it will continue with the exact same bet as you put in last time. So we put in A, which doesn't make sense. It said enter a whole number of tokens. So it went here. But because we didn't have continue here, which would jump the program back there, it continues on with this with the same bet that was defined when we previously asked it. So that even if we do it again, 0 0.5, whole number of tokens, the accept runs, but without continue, the game won't run properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put continue back in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this again. Okay, here we go. Let's just go all in to show you what happens when you lose. Unless we win. Bet amount, 100 tokens. We lost this time. We put, tried to put in 100 tokens. We're now out of tokens. And it thanks us for trying. And just to show you again, if you try and put in a bet higher than the amount, because the game's restarted. If you try to put a bet higher than the amount, 150 tokens, it tells you not enough tokens. And it just works again. So,
that's it. Slots machine in Python. Pretty pretty short amount of code to write, but overall quite a cool game, I think. Um, I'm very glad to be back, most importantly, making these tutorials again. I thank you all for sticking by with me, for all of those who stayed. And if you're interested in more of these tutorials, I've got a Python project series, and this likely will be in the playlist, and I've got a couple more there. But I would like to say that I will be back to uploading a lot more frequently now. So if you are interested in supporting the channel, please consider subscribing because I just got back and I'll be making lots and lots more videos, which will hopefully help you guys with coding or whatever else I create. So once again, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.